Oh, well that was a thing, wasn't it? Um, so there's a lot about this setup I could talk about, but a um, couple of things I hadn't anticipated. So saturation and gain staging. It's very easy when you're playing just a simple monophonic patch on this thing, just to turn all the levels up to full and not really think about it. But for a whole mix, you want to control that sort of thing just to make sure you're not uh, clipping before you even reach the recorder. But it's also worth checking the manuals for your modules for voltage levels and having an oscilloscope handy to double check. I didn't realise for a long time that this dual envelope generator here outputs envelopes that peak at 8 volts right next to a VCA that saturates and distorts above 5 volts. So I now always run this with the levels turned down. On one of the layers I had this overdrive effect that when turned up to full would cause the signal to start clipping further downstream in the signal chain. Uh, luckily the very next thing in the signal chain was a filter that also happens to have an input level control. So I just did the simple thing and manually rode both knobs at the same time, turning down the filter input whenever I turned the drive up. On the main lead synth I had the Keysteps mod wheel control strip set to open the filter and I noticed that the more I would open the filter the more the volume of the part would go up as well. Normally I would just throw a compressor on that if I was doing it in software and not think anything of it, but I don't have a hardware compressor. So I patched one together by splitting the signal into a crossfader and an envelope follower and basically invert the envelope follower signal so that the louder the lead instrument gets, the more it turns down the crossfader. Tuning and temperature compensation. I was using this educational VCO kit from Erica Synths as my main lead. It's a fantastic piece of kit, taught me a ton about electronics, but it is quite a basic circuit and its tuning is very sensitive to the temperature of the room. I also haven't built this kit very well, which doesn't help and explains why there's a floating patch cable going into the FM input, because that seems to help stabilise it. But yeah, I had to recalibrate this a lot. Uh, basically every time I would come in to practice, I would have to recalibrate it based on how hot it was that day. I have got a second kit that I'm going to see if I can do a better job of building it. Not an insult to the module, it serves its purpose fantastically, which is primarily a teaching tool, but just something to be aware of if you want to buy one. But the real stars of the show here are the fantastic Keystep Pro and Touch OSC running on my Raspberry Pi. I've got the Keystep Pro sending a clocks out to both my door via the, via the audio interface and out to my rack here got a MIDI input that's sending the clock signal over to over to my modular clock. So with nothing currently running, a single button press will start the sequences in the key step, the clock in my rack and my door. The irony there is you'll notice all of the outputs except one on my modular clock are not patched into anything. Um, I did set up four of the outputs to give me a visual metronome which helped a lot when I was uh, when I was trying to do the performance. Um, but yeah, this eighth output, I did have that set to ping a filter at one point, but I ended up not using that in the performance. I had a couple of ideas that I didn't end up using because I just kept doing takes that extended out to 15 minutes or more, and that's not what I was aiming for. Touch OSC is an incredible bit of kit without which this would not have been possible. I've got it running on my Raspberry Pi hooked up to the Windows machine running as an editor server so I can edit my custom control interface on the big PC and have it immediately reflected on the touchscreen. I've got this set up to send both OSC control messages up to my door and MIDI in to the Keystep Pro. So you'll notice number one here at the moment if I poke these buttons it uh, changes the pattern on the sequencer there, which if you know how to use a key step, if this was running, the pattern changes would be, would be synchronized to the length of the pattern. The real secret source is in how I use this to do synchronized live pattern changes with Renoise. Now there used to be add-ons that would let you do this, duplex and grid pi, but I'm not entirely sure they're maintained. I see a lot of forum messages about them not working anymore. 
the secret to making this work without external add-ons is using phrase mode. So the way I've got this set up, I've just got a single repeating pattern representing a four or eight bar block. And in every track that I want to sequence, I've just got a single note right at the start of the pattern. And as long as all the instruments that I've got loaded are in phrase mode, those notes will act as triggers for a phrase. Each time it loops back to the start of the pattern, each instrument will trigger whichever phrase it's currently set to. So by sending in MIDI or OSC program change messages, you can queue up a different phrase for the next four or eight bars. The end result is it behaves very much like the sequencer on the key step. You can poke a button to queue up the next phrase and it will automatically change to that phrase synchronized with the next four or eight bars. Add an empty phrase and you also have a convenient way to mute. Now I haven't figured out a way to do an equivalent of the key step pattern chaining with this. You can only queue up a single pattern change at a time, but it's a lot better than nothing.